passion for social welfare and before I came here was involved in running a homeless drop-in and I set up a charity to help people with debt and benefit advice. This passion for uh, serving the common good, kind of helping people, was part of the, the ethos of this parish church. So we now are home to a number of recovery groups, uh, we provide all sorts of community services and one of them was about four years ago, four or five years ago, we heard that the Real Junk Food Project were looking for a home and so we offered them a base here. So the Real Junk Food Project are um, an organisation that operate here in um, Sussex, in Brighton and elsewhere in the country. Um, so they basically, they use surplus food at the very end of its possible life. So those guys, um, they f they're feeding vulnerable people, they're running pay-as-you-feel cafes, they're training chefs, they're using professional chefs, um, and they're cooking really, really great food for people who wouldn't otherwise be able to afford to go and eat food, um, as well as food banks and obviously COVID response that they've provided as well at this time. To start with, that was their, their full-time base, so we became their storeroom for all their food. Uh, but also they were producing lunches three days a week in those days. Uh, over, the, over time that, that relationship has developed, uh, they've established partnerships with other people in the city as well, so they now have a number of different bases, uh, but they're still uh, producing food here on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. You know, I tell people about the Real Junk Food Project, it's three things, you know, surplus food, uh, pay as you feel, and cooked by really nice chefs so there's nothing really not to love about those three things. The, the number one goal of, of the project was saving food, the second goal was feeding people with that food but actually very early on when we started to see the numbers turning up at one church you know we'd have 200 people in a room you know people from all walks of life sitting down no one on their phones breaking bread together and that community atmosphere was I mean, just absolutely stunning. It was just a, a wonderful thing to, to, to behold. So for me, the community cohesion, bringing people together like that, just outweighed, outweighed the saving the food, outweighed feeding people. It was that, that was magic. The guys who actually run the, the kitchens at The Real Junk Food come here to Fairshare and they cook in our volunteer kitchen they use our surplus food to provide all of our workforce of volunteers with a really good hot lunch um, every Friday um, and it's a, it's a favourite for our volunteers um, and also just the amount of uh, surplus that those guys are able to take from us um, that other projects just wouldn't be able to handle at that volume and, um, and the point where the food is towards the end of its life um, they really rescue a lot of produce from us, which is vital for what we do. The project's been running for six years in Brighton. Uh, it was started by Adam Buckingham. I got involved shortly after that, probably about five years ago now. The founder of the whole network, Adam Smith, he was driving around in his van picking up surplus food, whether that was from bins or from um, yeah anywhere that it was being wasted. And he had a little cafe in Armley and he was serving up this food um, to the public on a pay as you feel basis. Having seen the amount of food that was being thrown away at restaurant level um, and always thinking there must be something we can do with this. So I reached out to Adam and just said I think what you're doing is incredible, this initiative is amazing, um, let me know if I can help. And he got back to me very quickly and just said start one up in Brighton and we'll support you. Fair share uh, intercept surplus and donated food um, at a national scale um, and here at Fair share Sussex we uh, redistribute the surplus food that we receive to um, over 130 projects across Sussex and Surrey um, and Kent and uh, in doing that we provide healthy good quality nutritious food um, for organisations to be able to feed their own beneficiaries. The Junk Food Project is really very simple. Uh, we aim to stop food being wasted by collecting surplus food daily from supermarkets and then instead of having it uh, go to landfill, be thrown away, we actually cook it up in cafes, 
turn it into healthy and nutritious meals and so it's the community. So we feel very strongly that the food, people have a right to eat that food. An awful lot of the world's resources have gone into growing it and transporting it. And so our mission really is to get that food into people's bellies. That's why we call it feed bellies and not bins. So we've often been um, classed as a food bank or a soup kitchen within the city because our pay-as-you-feel concept is misunderstood. I think people think that what we were doing, it was just like a soup kitchen and it isn't. Um, at one church you have families, you have elderly people. Sometimes, like at St Luke's when I was working up there, there was a, there's a guy that came every week and he said, the only time I get to speak to someone is when I come in and have my... My, my lunch. It's, it's a wonderful project um, and you get people who are surprised at um, the quality of the food. You know, when you say, tell people what it's about, junk food, it's food rescued from, that would have been thrown away, you get, especially younger people who think, oh, I'm not eating that, it's rubbish. Um, but then, you know, when you get them to, it's, they're surprised at how how good it is. I think a lot of people will sort of look at, you know, the, the setup here, it's in the church and whatever, and they probably think, oh, it's, you know, it's, it's a soup kitchen, um, and it's far, far more than that. And it is good quality food that would be going to waste. That surprised me, that it wasn't just a soup kitchen. Uh, with, with one church, because of, there were a lot of homeless there, but they've got four different cafes, and and yeah, it was the, the, the different, different types of people all using our, our cafes, basically. Well, we make a big point of the fact that the food is free, and so we are not selling the food. And that's one of the key principles of the junk food project. Yes, the food can be free if people haven't got any money, but you know that doesn't make us a soup kitchen or a food bank. So what we try and do is people who come here we try and get the message across to them that we need them to help come and rescue this food because there's no junk food project if people aren't coming to take the food so I try and you know we're not a food bank we're not a soup kitchen we're an environmental project rescuing food and we need people to come and be part of the whole collective. No no it's not free but I think it helps people and why should you be ashamed if you need help it's better to have help and not have food and also the quality of the food and the stuff that you get given, I, I don't understand why people wouldn't come. I first found out about the junk food project through my son who was encouraging me to go to one of the restaurants. The one that he was thinking of is in St Luke's in Brighton and from there I discovered this amazing pub run by volunteers and the whole project is to make sure that food that's consumable stays out of bins and goes into tums. So what did you have today? I had the pumpkin bean curry coconut rice and a bargy with it. Really? Okay, and uh, what did you think? I thought it was brilliant. Superb. And is it a surprise to you to hear that it would have been, th all that, all the ingredients would have been thrown away otherwise? Uh, it's a shock actually, that it, that it would have all gone into food waste. It is a bit of a shock. I uh, come here because I love the Real Junk Food Project. I love the ethos. I love the way that it's so incredibly sustainable because it's, you know, taking food that could, would be thrown away normally. I, that, that's the best curry I've had anywhere. So I'm, I'm really, I'm so pleased with it. We were literally just walking past down those. We saw um, that there was a sign on the outside that said, hey, it's a feel. Um, figured there's probably some good things going on in there. So um, yeah, just stopped and decided to have a coffee in this spot here. I like it because I don't have much money and um, it's really nice. I don't get the opportunity to come and eat out that often actually. Um, so it's nice to be able to bring these two as well. Um. <laughs> I'm impressed that they've got so much food and I mean it's so sad that that would have gone to waste. And it saves people because during obviously Covid-19 people haven't got as much money as they would have. It's an amazing project run by really passionate people and I would really encourage anybody, no matter what, to take full advantage. The values that we share between us, between the church and the Real Junk Food Project, one of the things that we uh, we keep in mind all the time here at church is the, a saying that's attributed to St Francis, which is that you should preach the gospel at all times and when necessary use words. And so one of the things we really want to do is put our 
understanding about faith and serving the common good into practice and this partnership with the Real Junk Food Project is one of the ways we, we can do that. The whole ethos and the whole, the whole the values of the Table Tennis Club and the Junk Food Project, I think there's a huge synergy because of um, people paying, us, paying what they can. Um, there's no stigma attached if you can't afford anything. No one knows who's paying what. Um, I think there's a lot of shared values between the Junk Food Project and the Table Tennis Club. So we're just doing the same thing, but one is through sport and one is through food. I work with, with those guys every day. Um, I'm always on the phone to them. If I need to move something, uh, I'm on the phone to Sarah. She's fantastic. I love her to pieces. They're amazing. She understands. She she just we just we're both, we're all working towards the same cause. And the what why that's so fantastic for us is because we both both of our organisations do completely different things within surplus food, but we're both working towards the same common goal, which is to not put any food into the bin and to make sure that people get fed. And to have the real junk food, it's almost like, if you imagine like, we're a big food supplier and they're a fancy restaurant in the real food industry. That's what we do, but we're doing it for all the right reasons.